I stand before you today, thrilled to introduce two exceptional individuals who embody the spirit of innovation and intellectual exploration, Emma Nelms and Jock Quinn, QUT Library AI and Digital Dexterity Champions. Together, we embark on a transformative journey that will revolutionize the landscape of research. Many library discussions around ChatGPT and generative AI in the higher education context have focused on teaching and learning, but what can it do for researchers? Currently, even ChatGPT4 has some immense limitations. Plugins are promising but don't work, and it has that tendency to hallucinate. Here are five ways that ChatGPT specifically is being used by researchers across disciplines, with a reminder that it is very much a work in progress. One. Brainstorm and define your research question. ChatGBT can be used in dialogue with a researcher to identify insights, correlations and gaps. It can be obvious or irrelevant, but sometimes perceptive. Given a discipline, ChatGBT can quickly define possible research questions or counter-arguments. This is where a well-defined prompt can be useful. Websites such as FlowGBT, not the best but free, offers a multitude of prompts. These offer a template for you to build upon. 2. Summarise an academic article. Most successfully, ChatGPT is good at quickly summarising and offering insights from many existing research papers and academic articles. For example, the first five key points of a text, as well as offering translations. If available online, it should be within the existing data set, but you will have to still copy and paste it into ChatGPT. There's a ChatGBT sidebar Chrome extension that can be used to summarize or translate web pages. So I can use this while reading the HTML version of an article within the database. 3. Review research questions before submitting for peer review. While no substitute for actual peer review, it does serve as a proofreading and editing tool. Researchers can ask for suggestions to improve sentence structure, clarity and coherence, but it also can be reviewed from methodological perspectives. However, remember that before being submitted, it becomes part of the ChatGPT dataset, so it might be wise to limit to chunks of text. 4. Polish your academic writing. ChatGPT can assist with grammar and academic style, a functionality coming to Google Docs and MS Word anytime soon. Be clear about context and purpose of the output, e.g. a literature review, a discussion paper, an introduction. Thesis Whisperer's recent post listed some prescriptive prompts such as reducing instances of certain words, adding bridging sentences, adding conjunctive phrases, etc. It can even be taught to identify the elements of your own style and replicate it. 5. Interrogate your data with some generated code. Importantly for research applications, not only can ChatGPT give responses using text, but you can also ask it to write code as well. However, like all ChatGBT responses, the better the information provided in the query, the more relevant the response. ChatGBT relies on the information provided in the question to generate an answer. You will need to verify the code return does what you want it to do. If you have some code and do not know what it does, you can also ask ChatGBT to explain the code to you. Generative AI is being embedded in more tools and is a rapidly changing space. It is worthwhile to be sceptical and aware of its limitations, but learning to choose ChatGPT ethically and productively is a skill that researchers as well as students will have to learn.